<coughs> well, we have quadrants one, two, three, and four. And there's a letters that kind of tell us A S T C. The A stands for all. All of the trig functions are positive in quadrant one. This makes sense because your x value here is positive, and your y value is positive, and radius will always be positive. So if you did something like um, cosine of theta, that'd be the x divided by the r, positive number divided by a positive number gives you a positive. But let's just say you worked in quadrant four. If you went to the right, that's positive, and if you go down, that's gonna be what class? negative. So if you did something like tangent, tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent or the y over the x. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. Cosine and secant are positive here. The other four trig functions are negative. I just showed you that with a tangent example. Let me show you how secant is positive. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is x over r, so secant is going to be r over x. So you have the r, which is always positive, and then over the x, so positive divided by positive is a positive. If you go into quadrants 2 and 4, your x value is going to be what class? Negative. If you're going up on the y-axis, that's what? Positive or negative? Positive. If you ever go down on the y values, it's, and radius will always be what? Positive. Now around here, let's see if I can use my compass. And basically what we're creating here is the unit circle. Okay, we're going in this direction. Um, you'll notice I have the quadrantal angles measured in degrees, and I also in green have them measured in radians. And there's a silly acronym that can help you uh, remember the order of this. Repeat after me. All, All. <coughs> students, students take, take calculus. calculus. Say it together. Ready, set, go. All so that silly acronym will help you remember where are the trig functions positive.